Well, okay, we're back from the break time, and we got some more firing going on. Can you find any sort of Anything. Stoneware, porcelain, as long as it's hot fire. Yeah, so that uh, might have been a porcelain. And, and this is your thing, not Yeah, yeah, so, um, it used to be the CPS but yeah, I, uh, I did a Kickstarter campaign to fund the rest of the project and make it possible or whatever they have, because they were left over the next And then, apparently, uh, sometimes, really part of their facility. And they're sort of long term term players. Here, you know what's in here? Is it 9, 10, 11? Yeah. And 9 is... Yeah, 10 is about 3 o'clock, I'm looking like. Yeah. Well... Leave it, uh, leave the brick back in. I tend to, once they start going, I leave it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I don't like peeking too much. In fact, what I try to do is, uh, from back here, I try to, especially at night, you can see it better, uh, is you can see better, really. Once you, well, once you learn where to look, sometimes you'll see the tip of the cone. Oh. You know, without having to move the whole brick, because when you move the brick, you're, you're going to suck cold air in. Or... You're going to get a face full of flame if you're stoking. If you if you watch around kilns and group firing, people are always looking in the bucket. Ain't it done yet? Is it done yet? You know, let me look. They went, How come the cone's not going down? They open it up, everything melted to the floor. Because they overfired and they froze the cone. Yeah, just be patient, buddy. Oh, yeah. It is exciting, though. Oh, yeah. I, so, of course, I can't stop looking either. <laughs> but, see, now, like, I'll try to find a spot in here. Before oh, yeah. I even touch it, I'll look back in here, see, from back here. Go back, step back okay. here, see, see. Now, you see, you can just watch the flame. You can you can see what's happening. If you pay attention, you look in, focus a foot inside. Huh. See, don't look with your eyes or your face. Use your brain inside the kiln there, and you focus deep in, and you'll see it. You know, you don't have to open the thing up. There's just enough light. Once it gets bright enough, but that takes, you know, looking in there a few times. You say, oh, okay, so now I remember what it was. So it's, it's brighter than what you saw before. It's obviously hotter. And you don't have to open it up, and you won't freeze the cone. Because you don't want to overfire. It's funny, my wife asked me one time, she said, could you overfire, Gary? I said, oh, no, no, I got another six, seven hours to go. Come back the next day, and I'd hit, like, home 14 in front, and I had a runny glaze, and pots all over the shelf. I should have listened to that. I should have listened to, honey, aren't you coming to bed yet? Yeah, they actually pull out of those little clinkers. They just melt. So there we go. Inside it looks real pretty. Oh, yeah. There we go, buddy. There you go. Good shot, dude. So this is what you call a rifle stoking. Uh, just keeping it open and letting it get some good air. Yeah, yeah then the coal bed, the coal bed just builds up on That'll, the bottom. I see. And the air sort of comes up through the coal bed. As That's well. just it. All they were depending on is the air coming through the coal bed, and you don't have any. Your gases are released, but there's no secondary air to burn them. You're getting your air now. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of need it almost. 
it's just like a bore aid, it's just coming from a different direction. You got two sources of air. One's your primary air and one's your secondary air. Right. Right. So which just, one would you call the primary in this case? Well, uh, well, right now I'd say this is your primary. And it, to me, firing off, about off the coal pack pile is yeah. the secondary. Because my, you know, the secondary... Um, <laughs> see, your coal pile release, or heats the wood and the gases are released. So this should and be the air, up, uh, the secondary air, because your primary air goes through the wood. Right. Okay. If we agree that the primary air goes through the wood, right. in this firebox, that's your primary. And right. in the bore, your uh, top uh, holes are. It turns up the consumption of wood, <laughs> for sure, but uh, it gets hotter. What? You know? Yeah, the the dampers are open. Oh, this. Well, you got to consume wood if you want to get hotter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it says. What do you put? Lighter, faster. Yeah, you got to know. Something else I discovered when I rebuilt the firebox. Okay, if this was the bore, okay, and your, your primary air is coming in. You know how they show them coming in near the top sometimes? I put my primary air coming in right above the, bo the the hob, right at wood level. So the wood got the air right away. The, the gases weren't climbing up inside the firebox into this snake we kept seeing. My buddy Rick said, why is that snake going up inside the firebox like that? You know, how come it's not going down in the throat arch where it belongs? And we figured it was searching for oxygen from the holes up here. And so I moved the holes down to the level of the level of the fire, and it sucked, got the air right away. Yeah. Huh. That is what burnt, and none of this got clouded up. See, and the flame didn't want to go up into the pile. Once you build a bunch of kilns and you keep firing them, you're like, I don't understand how they work, and you have to just kind of work through them at every one and kind of figure out what's actually happening. Yeah. Um, and that it uh, well, it took about three or four fire. Yeah, it was about the fourth firing. I rebuilt the firebox, I think, wasn't it? Or no, you didn't look at the. You haven't seen the chronology in Footkey, eh? No, I don't. Yeah. I should get somebody to edit all that crap for me and put it into a book. Somebody said I should have a book on it, but I don't know. It, to me, it doesn't matter. Take off the car hearts. I'm getting warm now. Oh, yeah.